So today I want to look at this two capacitor problem. This is kind of a standard problem. It comes in a lot of different flavors, but uh, here's one particular flavor. So you start off with two capacitors, and in this case, I, they're both the same, and I've got them initially charged with a charge of six coulomb uh, on each of the plates. So I've got it kind of written in red here. Uh, you know the thickness of the capacitor, and originally they're all air-filled. And then you say, well, I'm going to insert a dielectric with a dielectric constant equal to 1.5 into one of the capacitors. And the question is, what is the new charge on the plates at the end? Here's the initial charge on the plates. Uh, but what happens after I insert this dielectric constant? So this is the initial picture. What's the final picture look like? So the final picture would simply look like Again, you'd have two capacitors. You'd have positive, you'd have positive, and I can't forget to insert this dielectric, which has a constant of 1.5. So the best way to kind of tackle this problem here is to see well, what's going to change after I insert this dielectric constant. One thing you should know that always changes is the capacitance of the capacitor here on the right hand side. Initially it's two microfarad, uh, both of them are the same. After the capacitance is going to change and the value is going to be K, the dielectric constant, times the initial capacitance which is 2. So in this case it's 3 over 2 times 2 microfarad. Uh, you should end up with 3 microfarad is the final capacitance of just the right hand side. All right, the second thing to notice is initially if I look at all the charge in this if I look at all the charge on this top section over here. All the charge is kind of fixed, all right? The charge is not going to jump across the plates over here. So all the charge within this line over here has to be fixed. Charge has to be conserved within this process, even if it rearranges itself after I've put in the dielectric. Uh, within this top section, it has to be fixed. And in this case, the initial charge is simply 6 plus 6, which equals to 12 coulomb. That's the initial charge on top of the plate. So that means if I call this Q1 final, and I call the right hand side Q2 final, I have to have Q1 final plus Q2 final must be equal to 12. And that simply is another statement of conservation of charge. Okay, so now we have to ask ourselves, we have one equation here, but unfortunately we have two unknowns. So we need to do something else. So we need to introduce at least one other equation if we're going to solve this problem. If we're going to be able to solve for what are the final charges on each capacitor. And the next thing you can look at is what is the voltage difference between this point A and B? And what is the difference between these two points C and D? Okay. If you just do apply your loop rule to this simple circuit go around A, B, C, D, you're going to find that uh, the voltage across capacitor 1 in its final state has to be equal to the voltage across the second capacitor. Now you can extend this equation one step further here. If we use our capacitor equation, remember the capacitor equation relates the charge to the voltage, we have to have this. That's our main capacitor equation. So this means if I substitute it into equation 2 over here, I could simplify this. This is simply going to be Q1 final divided by the capacitance of 1 must be equal to Q2 final divided by the capacitance of 2. And they're no longer the same C1 and C2 in this problem because I've inserted the dielectric on the right hand side. So therefore, I'm going to isolate Q2 final 
and that's simply going to be the ratio of the final capacitances of each side multiplied by uh, the charge on the left hand side Q1F. Okay so if we go back to equation 1 now and we eliminate Q2F, the final charge on the right hand side, we're going to get Q1F plus Instead of Q2F, I'm going to substitute by my equation over here in the box. This is going to be C1 over C2. Q1F, this must be equal to 12. Again, now if you substitute in the values, what you're going to find is that you have one equation and the only unknown here is Q1 final. So Q1 final simply equal to 12 divided by 1 plus C1 over C2. So C1 is the capacitance on the left hand side, C2 is the capacitance with the dielectric. So we have Q1 final is 12, 1 plus, again C1 is 2 microfarad, divided by 3 microfarad. I don't have to write the microfarads, those will just cancel out. So we're just about done here. We get 12. Maybe I can do this, it'll be 5 over 3. And putting everything together, you're going to get 36 over 5 Coulomb is the charge on the left hand side. All right, so knowing that, now you should be able to calculate the charge on the right hand side. The charge on the right hand side, Q2F, I just go back to my equation, um, it's simply two-thirds of 36 over 5. Multiply, cancel by 12. I'm left with 24 over 5 Coulomb. All right, so I can go ahead and fill that in here. So Q1F, 36 over 5. And Q2F is simply 24 over 5. And that's all you have, folks. Okay? So there's a problem of two capacitors uh, where I've inserted a dielectric uh, in one side.